Welcome back to the Ride and Laugh podcast. If you love mountain biking, you are in the right place. Picture your last group ride. Everybody had a great time. You're back at the parking lot. You're talking bikes, tech, trails, progression. The stoke is high. You love bikes. We love bikes. Let's drop in. Sage, how are you today? <laughs> Danny, I am doing so good, man. I got a uh, a top 10 today on my road ride. Ooh. I, oh, I know. Road okay. Ride. Let's know. Uh, road ride. Let's but. go ahead and, and start this again. Uh, if you love mountain biking, you are in the first. First of all, congrats on the top ten. Um, I just got to say, if you're Thank listening you. to this on the podcast, it's worth going and listening to the beginning of this one or watching it on YouTube because Sage dancing around while I'm doing the opening sequence. Are you not going to? Maybe maybe you're not going to be visible. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's that right. just gonna be my face. <laughs> It'll be the one. Oh, I'm yeah. the only one gets to see you dancing <laughs> while I'm talking. <laughs> I've never been a DJ or you know been into a hip hop or rap or anything like that, but I guess that's how yeah. it feels, you know. Like yeah. Uh, yeah, an I'm, audience I'm, of one. <laughs> I, I'm doing my best to distract you. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right, you went out on your road bike, yes, and you were crushing yes. hills. I, you know what? And that's the thing that I think I'm most proud of. Like you and I, you know, we're, we've been riding for quite some time. It's, it's very rare that we get top tens, you know? So, so when you get one, it feels what good. What is the top 10? What do you mean? What do you mean by a top 10? Oh my gosh. Yeah. That. I didn't, I didn't explain that. That's right. So we record on an app called Strava and in Strava, we're able to set up segments, which are just kind of predetermined in and out points, uh, during your ride. And so there's a segment at the end of my ride called Hathaway, um, which is kind of like a, maybe it's about a mile long, somewhere, somewhere in there. And so I'd kind of been eyeing this one up, but it's at the end of my ride. So I, I as Dan had just mentioned, I do a lot of hill work on, on my, on my typical rides and it was really hot today. It was really humid, but I was like, you know what? Yeah, it was I'm going for today. it today. Yeah. It was so yeah. humid. I, it was so humid, but I went for it, man. I was like, you know what? Let's, let's empty the tank. And, uh, yeah, I got a top two yeah. on one of them and, and a top three on another. So, whoa. Oh, 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 okay. Almost okay. comes, which is the king of the mountain. So go back and if you're not familiar with Strava or you've only played with it a little bit, you can go back and listen to our entire podcast that we did on yeah. Strava. That's which right. is episode I don't know, and it's titled I'm not sure. What was the ah, title? <laughs> it's, it's it's titled Strava. It literally Strava. is Strava. Yeah. Yes. I, who would forget that? <laughs> it's the easiest thing to remember. So we talk a lot about it, but these uh, these segments are really kind of like the fastest time, and anyone can anyone that rides through that segment will be considered on the segment. And um, so people, when they do their ride, they start to kind of figure out where their segments are that, you know, after the ride, you look at your segments and you're like, oh, I was 15th at here, you know, and so maybe I can get into the top 10. And Stra so Strava will award you a top 10 badge on that ride if you're, yeah. if you get, if you get into the top 10. And then if you get the comm, you get a little trophy and whoever you took Ooh. the comm from, the trophy comm, the king of the mountain or queen of the mountain, if you're a lady rider, That's uh, right. they get an email that says, uh-oh. Someone just stole your comp, and so it's on. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. We are reviewing podcast number 19, Beware Baby Heads, and <laughs> the two hot takes that spun off of that, which was in case of emergency, activate pedal kick. Mm. And the second hot take is, is this the weirdest mountain bike term of all time? Hint, it's baby heads. Yeah. Um, that was a really fun episode and we got a lot of great feedback and I, and I know, I know people were laughing at that one. At least I hope you were, it was, it was meant to be funny. Uh, so as far as uh, collecting some of the feedback, cause it's all great and we appreciate everyone commenting ride and laugh one at Gmail or on the YouTube, um, both Dylan and Pat also, AKA rusty chain commented yeah. on the, in case of emergency activate pedal kick, uh, with a similar type of comment, which was. Does it matter which foot do you, does it matter to you which foot you have forward and you know or or oh. Dylan specifically saying like are you doing a move are you doing a ratchet to get your strong foot forward to be able to activate pedal kick I think this is probably more for you because you're so much better at the pedal kick <laughs> but I cer I certainly have experience <laughs> with doing it well and doing it poorly um, and yeah. just in general you know I thought it was just kind of a, a generally interesting topic of which foot yeah. forward. 
And do you practice your weak foot forward? Is that called goofy foot in mountain biking or is that reserved for skateboarding and, and snowboarding? Well, goofy listen, foot. you, yeah, you, I, I've never heard that term until you said it to me because you had realized that I ride goofy foot forward. So I, yes. I am, I'm right-handed, which means that my dominant foot should be my right foot forward, yes. but it's not. Yes. I actually ride yes. left foot forward. Um, but in reference to what you were saying to Pat and Dylan, I replied back, um, it is important. It is important to know which your, your dominant foot is, whether that's goofy foot or not. And it's going to matter for whatever it is that you're doing, not just pedal kicks, but think of endo turns. You're going to have a strong side and you'll have a weak side. You know, trail stands, you're going to know which foot you want to have forward. But I was saying to them that I actually purposely practice both feet. And okay. the example, example that I gave, and I think, I think you and I do this, when we get to log overs, you know, I'll often go my weak foot forward, which in this case happens to be my right. And I'll practice that because there are instances on Mount Penn where we have to do a double log over. And I'm thinking about double down in specifically. There are two, two logs right in order. You don't have time to rearrange your foot. It's literally pop, pop. And so if you can work on getting your weak foot, you know, to be as strong as your dominant foot, it's really going to help big oh, time. As strong, as strong, I think is a very lofty goal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that would be awesome. That would be awesome. Yeah. And, and so, yeah, I, I do think it's, it's worth practicing on lower consequence type of things. It also, yes. when you, when I get into my hip hinge, it activates my hamstrings. And if you can switch feet, you kind of change the load on your muscles a little bit on, on a downhill. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's really helpful. And then there's just like, like you said, sometimes it might be a log over situation. Sometimes you might just be in a tech situation where you're pedaling through it and yeah. you are, you will have the weaker foot forward and you now have to commit to some sort of gnarly tech. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're in it. Like there's yeah. no, there's no more pedaling to be done. You're that's in right. a slab or a rock garden and that, you know, like pedaling would be more dangerous. So, you know, sometimes you're just like, Oh, Oh, that just, feels a little bit harder than it normally would. So yeah. yeah, I think, I think it's a good idea to start throwing that, that other foot forward a little bit and being a little cognizant of that. Yeah. As far as doing a pedal kick, I want to line that up with my strong foot. Um, <laughs> Even <I> then. Can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if it's an emergency, I think my body would take care of it with the, hey. <laughs> with the wrong foot. You know, that, that seems to be the only way I activate the pedal kick is for emergency. So as far as doing a challenging log over left foot forward, I, I don't know. I'd, ha I'd have to look at that. Maybe the easier ones. Yeah. Easier or step ones, up. So. Uh, listeners, let us know. Comment in the YouTube or ride and left one at Gmail. Do you practice your opposite for forward? And have you found that to be useful? And do you have a strong foot? And is, does, is anybody just, is, is, goofy a, is goofy a term for mountain biking? Yeah. And is Sage <laughs> the only one that's right-handed that rides <laughs> left foot forward? I mean, I remember that whole ride. I was, I was I asking you about it. And you're like, no, I ride right, right foot forward. And, I, and then I just watched you for like a half an hour. And I was like, you know, you don't. Your left foot's <laughs> always forward. <laughs> I know. I had We're no gonna do idea. a podcast someday and we should talk about this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Oh. So yeah, so comment. Let us know about the strong foot uh forward. Let us know if yes. people are practicing that. I'm I'm curious about that and how, how useful that is. All right, getting back to the comments, our awesome listeners and awesome feedback. Eric Zygus, if I'm saying that correctly. Yes, um, Eric pointed yes. out. For the record, I'm pretty sure Dan said false flat before Sage said it and then was roasted. Seems like he gets a free pass for a future goof up. And I have no doubt that that is correct, Eric, that uh, I said it <laughs> first and then he said it and then I made fun of him. Uh, yes. The more that you listen, the more you get to know me. Like, it doesn't matter who says it first. <laughs> it doesn't matter if if I said it and then, and then someone repeats it. Uh, yeah. If I pick up on it and I roast you. Uh, it means I like yeah. it. I mean, it's just, it's That's right. Just, yeah. It's yeah. Yep. But uh, I, I'm sure that I did that. I'm sure that I set Sage up all the time for things to, uh, to tease him about. And that's, that's just the relationship, you know, that's just the uh, two friends, you know, joshing on each yes. other. And um, as far as you getting a, a future pass for a goof up, mm. I guess you get, but what does that mean? I mean I'm not going to tease you about goofing up. 
I mean, teach you about swiveling so in your much. chair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, I'm pretty sure I've already used it. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't, he doesn't get a future pass. You know, I got like five in the bank. <laughs> He's in a negative right now. <laughs> He's got a goof up credit card. <laughs> the bank just called. They're holding your goof up in reserve. <laughs> All right, Eric, I'll, I'll take one of those off. I'll tell you what. Because you know what? Because you know what? Because I'm a nice guy. I'm in a good mood. I'm going to take two. How about that? <laughs> You're down to negative 58. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. And then. Uh, Marathon Mindy commented, you guys, and this is, this is like the third or fourth or fifth time that we got this comment. And it's such a huge compliment. I think it says you guys, are, she said, you guys are the car talk radio uh, show of bikes. The banter fun and tips are amazing. Love it. New subscriber. And we'll tell my biking buddies. So thank you, Mindy. We appreciate yes. that. Uh, I know the, the old car talk show on NPR. We talked about that in the past was uh, those guys were hilarious and, and really smart. So We'll take it. We're at least one of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for you to be like hilarious or smart. I don't know which one to choose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's not smart. I, not, I, don't, I don't know. Hilarious might be a little bit strong, but uh, no, we, we appreciate the compliment. And we, yes. you know, we talked about receiving compliments, so I shouldn't be deflecting. That's we right. We talked about receiving compliments in our Stoke yes. episode. And uh, so, yes. Thank you very much, Mindy, and thanks for telling your yes. friends and then everyone listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, maybe tell your mom or your dad about us. You know, like you know, maybe start spreading the word to, to anyone that just needs some positivity. You know, a little bit of humor, mm. a little bit of positivity, a little bit of a can-do attitude. Because yeah. we're about overcoming obstacles. We're about doing new things. We're about building the stoke and the community and feeling good and and living our best lives. And what's the best that can happen? So, who doesn't need a little bit more of that in their lives? Yeah, let's. How about we go the other way, and how about we get the younger demographic? You said mom and dad. Let's. Uh, we need the younger demographic. <laughs> mom and dad don't listen to podcasts, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> They're on the eight track. Maybe, maybe put us on cassette and give it to your mom. You know, <laughs> put it on the old Walkman. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> that is an excellent call. That is an excellent call and yes. uh, and a solid burn. See, Eric? See? He gets his in. Damn. He gets him in there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't underestimate Sage. Don't sleep on him. He'll burn right. you when you're That's not paying right. attention. Yeah. <laughs> Mom and dad. No, absolutely. Give it yeah. to your uh, your kids and your nieces and nephews and your That's right. friends who actually listen to podcasts. Not Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Excellent point. The last comment that we're going to talk about this week is I have to talk about because because we brought him up. Um, our buddy Steve with the Spot Rocker Belt Drive with the two thousand miles, and we were going back and forth, and we talked about him on another podcast, and we were, had all these questions for him. And he, so mainly, he's never broken a belt, and Sage and I, we and and his slipping problems were pretty minor. So I'm yeah. wondering if carbon is the way to go because that spot was carbon. He said that he said the, the carbon definitely flexes. He can feel it flex. Any any single speeder is going to feel their bike flex because you're putting yeah. some serious torque into it. But I wonder if carbon's the way to go. I don't know Steve's power to weight ratio or anything like that. Uh, <laughs> well, because I'm I'm heavy, so I'm big, you know, for any frame. So I, I know I was flexing the frame. You didn't really feel the belt slipping. It just but it broke a couple times. Yeah, no, I was laughing because it's just a funny thing to ask somebody. <laughs> By the way, uh, what's your power to weight ratio? <laughs> uh, 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 a lady never tells. <laughs> Is that not a thing? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> oh, and uh, well, I never. <laughs> I think we're the same ladies that aren't listening to podcasts. Like we're ladies from the 1800s. <laughs> All right. Oh well, gosh. Mrs. Roosevelt, uh, let's move on to our next topic. <laughs> Tell me about, uh, I was gone for two weekends. I was in Arizona for two weekends. Yes. Which I know is strictly against the rules. I can't, like, you know, I'm not allowed to miss two weekends of riding with with, with my homie Sage. Mm -hmm. But um, 
it was it was uh, you got to put family first and i did have i did have yeah. a great trip okay sage tell me about your rides since our last conversation so we spoke last wednesday and yeah so you could take yes. us from there. you know the days of the week I got, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be thursday friday <laughs> saturday sunday monday tuesday and then now is today so. you, you know what no actually in in my defense uh the last time i couldn't remember what i did on my ride you knew my ride better than i did yeah that's true mm-hmm. that's in my defense not your defense. Oh, yeah, that's right. I got my defenses wrong. Your Honor. <laughs> your Honor. <laughs> Objection. He's <laughs> arguing my case. <laughs> Sustained. Sustained. <laughs> oh, my Lord. All right. All right. Uh, so uh, on Friday, I-, I went to Mount Penn because I wanted to get shots for the episode 20. To prove to you that you could stand on either side of that rotating skinny, which we still haven't decided on a name, but we have Teeter Terror, Terror Teeter. Wait, which one? The what Terror was it? What Teeter. The Terror, terror teeter. teeter. Yes. And the Row Teeter. But yes. Pat, I got to tell you, I, I, well, I can't say this comment because it was just came in, but it was really good. He came up with another name for <laughs> well, that. Well, say it now. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> we got we to gotta, we gotta, we gotta wait a week. <laughs> so, so because, because the, the, the teeter totter part is now super wide. He said, right. now it's the table teeter, which, Oh, Oh my God. The table teeter. I know Dude. he's so good. I know. Rusty he's like, chain. Boom. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Pat, so good. From downtown. Oh, I love yeah. that. Yeah. Yep. All right. So, well, we haven't named it yet. And I do want to wait until it's completely built and I we agree. can get up on it and ride it and see what kind of terror this table teeters at now so yes so how about you yeah i i've only had one ride um so we spoke on wednesday we did the podcast and then i went for a ride on friday and it was like 110 it was gonna be a a high of 110 arizona that's the heat wave coming through there so i went to hall's trail system and i rode boulder dash which is their the newer of the two double black tech trails and felt really good felt really good and had a great time. Um, some of the scarier tech seems a little bit less scary, and I was able to flow into some things without looking at them because I hadn't been there in, in a long time, but um, just had a confidence that I got this. Just had confidence yeah. that I got this. You know, I can do this, and I'm good at this. And so I was having fun, and they painted white dots because otherwise you can't see where the trail is. And, and Boulder Dash, you can see where the trail is, but you can't necessarily see what the line is, and you can't necessarily know where some of these yeah. alt lines are. So the yeah. white dots really show the alt lines, and some of these alt lines, I'm just like, holy mackerel. And I, I ride this trail at very slow speed. It is, it is highly, highly technical. It's very sandy. It just that the whole trail system is just very sandy. And I ride it at pretty slow speed, but it's definitely designed for people to also go really fast. Oh, really? I, I, I don't know if, if you noticed that I, I, th- I did send you the video, but like a lot of the white dots go off of these kickers where you can yeah. just like launch, but you know, it's, it's, but it's very sandy and like, then you're going fast into the tack or you're going fast yeah. into a really yeah. sandy turn. There's gap jumps. There's I think three gap jumps in, in the place. One of them is a pretty sizable step down. Um, so you have to be going really fast. There's that tabletop on off that you see me pass and want me to do. Every time I, pa- I pass it, I'm like, are we doing it? I, my first on off is not going to be at on, on Boulder Dash. I've never done an on off yeah. feature before. I don't think. Have you? Have you ever done? An, I mean, we've done the Mountain Creek one, but that's like that's so smooth. This is like a tabletop on off. Yeah, I guess you're right. The The ones at Mountain Creek aren't really they don't count because they are so smooth. This is like a raw. Yeah. On a, yes. it's like literally it's a kicker onto a boulder. It's off camber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. know, I know. Yeah, I know. But it looks so cool, man. It really it does really look cool. cool. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, maybe when it? you come out, we'll 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 session yeah. it. But then you know, there's it's just everything's just so sandy there. It, it, it makes me nervous, but it holds. I mean, if you have the right tires, I guess, and and you're putting that traction down in the right in the right way. So, um, 
I'm like pretty stoked to get through this thing in one piece and be able to ride down all the tech and maybe and take like I'm taking like half of the alt lines, maybe three quarters of them. I mean, there's definitely some I haven't hit yet, and there's there's a couple that are just like really scary. I mean, um, Danny, you're you're riding by yourself. I mean, like it's true. You, if you it's were true. following somebody and you knew the speed, and then you didn't have to worry about the lines because now you're following. I bet you would be clearing all that stuff. You know, you're by yourself. You're picking your way through this. Maybe and. You get to ride this trail like once every like three months. So true. Yeah. You know what I mean, yeah, yeah. You All got right. you got tons of excuses in there. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. I will I will accept and take all of those excuses. Uh, I'm all sure. Right that I'll, I'll be slaying that trail in no time. So, yeah, yes. And uh, definitely hitting the steeps and the slabs and the rocks that I am riding over and just the exit out of that place is, is super, super steep. Like, you're not stopping yeah. on these things. They're full commitment. And I do come back with a high level of confidence. And, and so I'm, I'm looking forward to our next couple of rides. And listeners, put, put in the comments or ride and laugh on a Gmail, do you come back from a mountain bike trip with more confidence do you take that yeah. confidence to your local trails how many times have we done that sage where we come back from a trip and oh. then we hit the local trail and we're just like everything feels easy this is awesome and i feel like eventually yeah. it fades away but <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah right well, well yeah usually you get hurt you, crash. Or you have a crash yeah that's right yeah. and then it's like <laughs> it doesn't fade <laughs> it, it, it vaporizes instantly <laughs> it's a, it's who did i think i was <laughs> <laughs> but that's what we're yep. going for that's progression that that confidence yes. and feeling good and i got this absolutely yeah so yeah i, um, I gotta tell you danny that the stuff that you hit um i haven't seen the boulder dash footage yet but the stuff that you showed me on gold canyon yeah i mean that stuff looked so scary so yeah I mean, if it looks scary on the GoPro, I know it must be legit. And if you're saying it's scary, then I know this Boulder Dash must be no joke. You got me hyped, man. I can't wait to do it. Yeah. Oh, so unfortunately on the Boulder Dash trail on one of the, um, I, I would say like intermediate features is up and over this, this rock and there's, uh, there's white dots that go to the left and the rock is very, very off camber. So it's very slanted. It's much, much higher on the left and, and then it slants down pretty dramatically to the right and then goes off the trail and it's a really steep up and over and i'm not going fast enough i don't have that commitment level of getting up over a rock so i got like three quarters of the way up this thing ran out of speed and went to put my right foot down and there was nothing there and i just fell over into a pile of rocks desert rocks now there's no cactus there so i you know i was fortunate with that but it was like one of those slow speed. I had the action camera on, so you could you could actually play the. You can only see so much, but you could see me falling over. And yeah. As I was falling, I was like, "Oh no, you know this could be bad." You're putting ar you're putting arms out to catch yourself, you know, like. And so I was really okay. I had some uh, some pretty good scratches on my calf that um, were were not deep and scabbed over really quickly. Um, I did get my first legitimate scratch on the Firebird. On the chain stay, I got, I got, um, I had a moment of silence. That was what bothered me the most. I was like, oh no. But sometimes yeah. you just got to get that out of the way. The kind of riding we do, Absolutely. like that bike is not staying scratch free. I don't have a ride wrap on it. I, I was just like, nah, I feel like I'm just going to like scratch it off, you know, like anyway. I, I don't know. The, yeah. The, <laughs> yeah. Like I, the people I talked to about the ride wrap were like, it's for minor scratches. And I was like, yeah, I don't do minor. I don't do minor scratches. <laughs> we, we only do major <laughs> scratches. That's right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. And minor scratch protection is, is, is no good to me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but uh, you know, I didn't get hurt. And so uh, just like tons of gratitude to the universe and um, that, you know, it was, it was ended up being no big deal. And, and I finished the rest of the ride and I didn't lose my confidence. So, um, you know, it happens. It's riding. It's, it's mountain biking. We're, we're riding, we're riding bikes on rocks, right? Yeah, man, dude, the same thing happened to me on my ride on Friday. I that's right. Went up, yeah, yeah tell me about I went that. up. Dude, I was up on uh, the network skinny, and the skinny is built onto the hillside. So if you fall to the left, it's only like a three foot drop. You fall to you the fall back right, to the trail. You fall back to the trail. Right. Back to the trail. Right. You fall yeah. to the to the right, and it's like double. It's like you know four or five feet. You know that you're falling, and right. of course I felt the hill drop. I fell off. to the right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I've never fallen to the right. I fell to the right and it was scary, but somehow avoided all the rocks. I just, I walked away from that was like, <laughs> holy crap, you know? I and think you put that again. on Strava because I did see that. Oh, you did do it again. So what happened that you fell off? You, ne you never fall off of skinnies. I, first of all, I never fall off of that one. And if I do, yeah. I'm always conscious about falling off to the, to the, uh, I don't always left. fall off of that skinny, but when I do, but when I do, it's to the left. <laughs> it's to the left. <laughs> yep. Yep. You're I like, I never happened. fall, but when I do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hypothetically, hypothetically, but yeah, I don't know what happened. My, my brain just kind of checked out and you know, it, it was one of those rides, Danny, it was so hot. And that was like, you know, that network skinny comes after that big climb. <laughs> so, you know, and then you're doing the Ridge. So I'm, I'm pretty white yeah. at that point. You know, I'm on the single and speed. And the single speed. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and I didn't have, I didn't have you there to be like, Hey, maybe we should take a break. You know, I'm yeah, by yeah. myself and, you know, myself is yeah. like, no, no, you push through this. You push through this, yeah. man. Mm, so mm. Yeah, it was, it was a bad mistake. And then I attempted to do it five more times afterwards. And the result was never any better. I just, I could not get the skinny done. And you know, I love that skinny. Like that yeah. one is one of my favorites. Yeah. Is it, is it one of your favorites? I, I, that's all really, I think it's a really hard one. It's, um, it is. it's very, very, very thin at the top. It's, it's a, it's a sizable, you can't really tell looking at it cause it's a sizable tree, but it's, it's, it's been there for a while. And so the top, which was flattened out at one point has just eroded so that now it's super skinny up there. If you want to stay on the flat part, it is super skinny. And then the dismount is um sharp enough that you kind of need to lift the back wheel i've slid off bit, of that yeah. it, or it'll, it'll eat your derailleur and so there's just a lot going on getting onto it is a commitment um get, staying on it part. is a commitment and yeah. then getting off of it is a, is a little bit tricky so i i've done that one in the past but it's not one that i do every time and you do you you attack it a lot and you're amazing yeah you're incredible i know things. not that day not that day yeah, yeah. got away with one yep well, I'm happy to hear that both of us are okay. I'm, you know, that we both had scary falls and, and we're both okay. So, you know, sometimes things just work out in your favor and you got to look at those things and be like, yeah, yeah, everything worked out for me. That's, that's pretty cool. You know, I'm a rider who doesn't get hurt anymore. That's what I want to say to the universe. I'm a rider who doesn't fall often at all. But when I do, it's to the safe part. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking back to a statement that you have made, which was um, sometimes our worst crashes aren't our worst injuries. And like this crash was mm. like one of my worst crashes. And I walked away fine, like absolutely yeah. had like a little bit of a, you know, something, you know, a little scratch here. But like I literally fell yeah. five feet into like crap and walked away yeah. with nothing. Yeah. So I don't know, man. Somebody's looking out for yeah. us. Yes, absolutely. All right. Well, uh, what we want to talk about next is a topic that your buddy Anthony brought up to you at dinner one night, and I thought it was really, really interesting. And we'll uh, we'll start to we'll start to touch on it because it kind of really dovetails nicely into what we talked about with the last episode, and the last episode being what was the last episode? The track. last episode, we we were talking about <laughs> my anti widening stance, and so we were talking about oh, right that's specifically right, right. doing double black features, and you know, is there is why why is that important? Why is it important to have features that are yes. very dangerous yes. versus like a gap jump was a was a great yes. example, and it took it took me what forty five minutes to convince you of, of what I was saying, but. The main example I gave to you was the gap jump versus the tabletop. And so why would you even want to do a gap jump when the tabletop is exactly the same dimensions, you know, but with less risk? And so how that relates to Anthony's point was, you know, why are we doing these super risky things? And I got to tell you, Danny, this is probably going to be a two parter for us. Like, you know, I, I don't know that we can cover this all in one episode. I, I think we should start yeah. it today, but then probably pick it up again, you know, when, when we, we have more today? time. Yeah. I mean, it's worth touching on it, but I don't know. It's, it's such a, it's such a topic that 
like I was talking to, to my buddy Brian about this, Brian, Brian, like uh, B and E MTB. And he brought up a lot of really good points. And I was like, Oh, I didn't even think about that part, but it's, it's pretty intense when you start to yeah. di- dissect it. I, th- I think so too. I think there's a lot of parallels and we talked about this a little bit last week, but I think there's a lot of parallels with this topic and with life in general, with taking risks in general. And, yeah. and I, I would venture to guess that like your buddy, Anthony, who asked that question and anyone, any like listener, any of your friends that are, or, 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 or family that's like, why are you doing this sport? Like, you know, if you're doing this long enough, you're going to fall, you're going to get hurt. Like it's just part of it. Um, there's risk in everything. And I think, I think overcoming is part of what makes life really interesting. I pulled a couple of, of, of quotes from famous people and I'm going to read them to you. And you let me know um, which ones of which ones you resonate, if any of these. Uh, same same okay. thing, listener. As I read these, feel free to comment on which which of these, or if you have a, another famous quote on uh, on the similar vein, uh, let's get them going because I, I love these sorts of things and I find them very inspiring. But so I have four. The first one I have is the greater the obstacle, the more glory in overcoming it. That's Moliere. That's a French writer, I believe I said his name right. And we've already gone through the whole French thing that we don't, uh, <laughs> we're not very good at it. <laughs> we're not good at French. We're not good at math. Yeah. We're, good about, we're good at talking mountain bikes and teasing each other. <laughs> All right. The greater the obstacle, the more glory in overcoming it, right? Okay. So in mountain bike context, obstacles don't have to stop you. If you run into a wall, don't turn around and give up. Figure out how to climb it, go through it, or work around it. Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. Okay. I thought that one was kind of what you were talking about last week. It's almost too simple for me. It's, mm. it's almost like, it's not, it's not hitting your mojo. You, you know, you it's get not, the message yeah. is good, but it's yeah. not, it's not, um, it's not stoking you up. It's not getting, no, you, no. It was like, yeah, it's, it's not the, firing it's up the, the stoke. No, it's not. It's the like, if meter. the wall is, Ooh. Oh, yeah. Very stoke low meter. on the stoke meter for me. Yeah. It was like, okay. if the wall what did is you think tall, about? get a ladder. <laughs> you know? <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. If the hill's difficult to climb, don't tunnel through it. That's kind of, <laughs> that's, that's what we said last week, Michael Jordan. Jeez. <laughs> Come on, Michael. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Uh, how about this one? Okay. Here we go. This is, this is Robert F. Kennedy. Okay. Only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. Okay, I like that one. Okay, yeah. all right. And by the way, I looked up Helen Keller. She has a million amazing quotes. What an amazing, amazing person. So yeah, pretty uh, amazing. But this is the one I chose. Yeah, she's she's incredible. Like I, I got to read some more Helen Keller. My gosh, uh, but she wrote, "Life is either a daring adventure or nothing at all." Go for it. Stoke meter. Wow. Okay. Yeah. No, that's a Go good one it. too. Go, Helen. Absolutely. I just think things are much more interesting. I think life is much more interesting when we overcome obstacles, when we overcome fears, anything, anything hard that we've, you've done in your life, anything that you've gotten through and had, it was difficult, usually has the greatest rewards. Do you feel that way? I, I do feel that way. And I'm, I think that's one of our motivations. It, you, it just, it's the mental, it's the physical, it's all of that. But when it all comes together and you accomplish whatever it is that you had set your eye on, you know, like this, I'm going to do this gap jump. And when you finally get over it, that feeling is, is overwhelming. It's, it's such a powerful emotion. And I think the riskier something is, you know, now you're adding a little bit of an adrenaline to those emotions. It's just a total adrenaline dump, right? So <sighs> it's, it's like, we when don't want to do it. To- you don't, you don't, but like that, that adds to it. Right. So normally when you set a goal, like, okay, like this PR, like the PR that I hit on my road bike today, I knew about that segment. And I, I was like, you know what, this is a good day for me to go for it. It's very low risk. Like there's, I can't get hurt on this segment. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's just about how much power can I put down? Can I deal with the pain? And when I finished it, I knew I crushed it, you know, because I had looked at the leaderboard before and I was like, okay, I know I need to be in this zone in order to get it. So I was really happy. I was really happy that I, I, I had it, you know, and I was, it was at the end of my ride. But you know what, Dan? It doesn't compare 
to that feeling that I had when I cleared Hans Ray. And I feel like every podcast I talk about this Hans Ray moment <laughs> and I apologize, but it was just that important to me. And Hans Ray is a gap jump. Um, and it, it's, well, it's like a and gap a famous drop. Mountain biker. And a yeah. famous mountain biker. But, you know, Danny, you and I had looked at this thing for four years and we were just scared. We were so scared because if you missed, it was a sniper landing. And if you missed this gap and it was about, maybe 17 feet, somewhere, somewhere in that range. My gosh, if you missed us, it was Dunzo's. And when we cleared that, Danny, oh my gosh, I, my heart, I, I just, it, I felt like my heart was going to explode. It was just that much. So we had the physical, right? We had the physical of like getting up there and actually physically doing this activity. We had the mental. So we're like visualizing this all week. Like, yo, we're going to get this. We're going to get this. And then you add the adrenaline on top of that which is the part that we're missing from that road top 10. That adrenaline was not there for me, right? It was just like, I'm going to push and get it. But like, there was no risk factor to that. That's, yeah. that's, that's a huge difference. I will. I hate to, I, I totally, I totally understand everything you're saying. And I, and I completely agree with everything you're saying. All right. I, 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 I don't want to pigeonhole this into an adrenaline thing or risk because like when I went into that Cajonas line, I went in with confidence and I knew there it was high. I know it was high consequence and it was risky, but I also knew that I had it. I knew that I had the skills to do it. So when I'm looking at something and then later on on the K trail, I did the really steep, like double black alt line. And that was one where I looked at it first. The Cajonas, I didn't even really know what I was getting into. I just, I had, <laughs> I knew it was slabs <laughs> and I knew I was feeling good that day. Um, but that, but you know, this other one I looked at and I was like, you know what? I was waiting for some to not be alone. I was waiting for someone for you to be out there with me before I did it. And I was looking at it and I was like, no, I, you know, I got it. I think I got it. And then I was, I did, I did. And it was hard and I was really fired up about it, but it wasn't this. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's not always the adrenaline it's, it's, it's overcoming. It's, it's knowing that you have the skills, like even, especially when we visualize, when I'm visualizing something and then I get there yeah. the next week or, or the next month or maybe it takes three or four times before I'm like, okay, I'm ready to do this or I'm ready to do it really well. And then you do it. Like it's the sense of accomplishment. It's this, it's this getting over doing something difficult. And, and then it's also the flow of the, of the ride. You know, with, like when you're, when you're in the flow state, when you're locked in and you're in that flow state, you're like supremely present. You're trusting your skills. You're trusting in life. You're, 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 you're not thinking about anything but the trail and you're flowing over the tech or you're locked in on that skinny or you're hitting the jumps right and you know you got it. And it's like the supreme trust that everything is going to go well. And that feels really good. And you have that on the on the trails, like that's one of the great things about mountain biking. And you could, we could take that into life. Just like just trusting and knowing that everything's going to work out for us. Things are going to go well. And there's that great synchronicity again with mountain biking and life that, you know, we can, we can visualize and overcome anything. I love that. I love what Stoke you're saying. Meter. And uh, yeah, meter through, the <laughs> through the roof, through the roof. I, I absolutely love that. And I agree. I agree 100%. But I'm going to come back to the risk. And the reason why is the risk part is what separates this from. It has to be hard. Yeah, it, it has to. And there has to be an element that that's not. That's the part that Anthony asked me about that stumped me. Because here's here's the thing, Dan. You and I have gotten seriously hurt. You know, I, in, one, <laughs> in one, one injury, I broke my back, both my ribs, not both my, I only have two ribs. I broke two ribs <laughs> and both my wrists, you know? So it, that's in one injury, back, two ribs, and both my wrists. And I was itching to get back. I couldn't wait to get back on my mountain bike and I'm doing crazy things again. And you, you literally broke your entire face with screws and plates and, you know, wired shut jaw. And, and I mean, you had, you questioned life for a little bit there, but you were itching to get back, man. You were itching to get back uh, and look at you now. Yeah. Oh yeah. no. You know what? I appreciate that injury now because it was a, it was a, yeah. a, a, a midlife revelation. It was a near mm -hmm. life experience. Near it, life. It, it shook me out of my, 
Yeah, so it, it shook me out of uh, my, the, my, the rut that I was in. And I'll talk more about that on future episodes because there's things happening in my life that I'm really excited about that are yeah. different and that are all directly linked to this mega mountain bike crash. Um, yeah. But yeah, you're absolutely right. There's and, and anyone listening that's been in a bad crash, I mean, you, if you're listening now, you you love mountain biking, so you're back into it. <laughs> you, 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 <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Unless unless your son or daughter gave you this on the cassette and you're listening just for the stoke, <laughs> which is also yeah, very yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, so I, I had I had done something. I forget what it was. I had done something, and I'd, I'd gotten hurt. But it wasn't a, it wasn't a huge gotten hurt. It was like a silly like bang my elbow. And he's like, "Dude, I don't yeah. get it. Why are you?" He doesn't mountain bike, and he's like, "I why are you doing these things?" He's like, "You just yeah. broke your back, and you and now you fell off of this thing, and you're hurt. What? Are, why are you doing this?" And so, yeah. going back to what you were saying about the risk, right? There, there's a difference between pushing yourself, you know, to get a climb, you know, or to top 10 a segment or, yeah. you know, do a, a tabletop, you know, or something, I don't know. And then there's the extreme stuff, you know, and we're just, we're just dipping our toe. You and I are just dipping our toes into the extreme stuff. You know, we're starting to get into those bigger drops, the bigger jumps, the bigger gaps, these skinnies that have a little bit more consequence. What's driving us to do that? Why isn't everybody doing that? Well, uh, I mean, I think everyone's level of risk is relative to how comfortable they are on the trail, right? So what yeah. might be riskier for us five years ago, you know, may not be as risky now. You know, I mean, how, you know, we talked about that last week. Things that, that were hard before are now easy. And so you keep kind of upping it to see like, okay, well, how can I use my skills here? And how can I use my skills to get this and oh so wait i just did that could i do that i just rode that jump could i clear that jump and suddenly yeah. you're looking at you know you do an intermediate jump line and then you're looking at the expert jump line and you're like well i think maybe i could do this and i don't know that's that's pretty exciting you're moving forward so yes I, I don't know exactly what the answer is here listener we are absolutely interested in your input uh, so in the comments let's get a dialogue going in the youtube comments if you want to email us at ride laugh on a gmail, what are the reasons? Why do mountain bikers seem to really thrive thrive on taking risks? Is it taking risks, or is it just, it just is it just conquering advanced features? What motivates us? What motivates you, listener? What motivates you to to want to get from the intermediate trail to the expert trail? I think, I think that sense of flow, like, you know, using your skills and knowing that you got it. it's just, it just, it just feels really good to be able to say, yeah, I can do this. And we sometimes, you know, we live our lives and, and, you know, life may not be that exciting, but on the weekend when we get on the trail, man, we get a chance to do something really cool and really exciting and hey, take pictures of it, get videos of it, you know, watch it over and over, put it on yeah. your, on your phone, put it on your screensaver, you know, like, yeah, this is cool. That was that was a great day at the bike park, and and we take tons of pictures of the bike park, and yeah. So it's uh, I'm gonna think, I'm man? gonna introduce a concept here, and it's it's a deep one. So we'll probably have to cover this. Like I said, it's probably a two episode thing, okay. but it's a concept of a floating ceiling. And you had mentioned this because you and I had started our mountain bike career. Actually, majority of our mountain bike career was spent more XC. You know, I, I would, I, if I was looking at myself five years ago and looking at me now, I'd be like, dude, you are nuts. I cannot believe the stuff that you are doing. Yeah. And that yeah. was the thing back then we had a ceiling. It was a ceiling and I never thought I wanted to do a drop. I never thought I wanted to do any of this. In fact, I, I would look at that stuff and I'd be like, y'all are nuts. That's crazy. Let me just see how mm -hmm. fast I can climb up this hill. And that was exciting mm -hmm. for me. And I was chasing that, you know? And then I remember the exact moment where everything shifted. It was Dane's run, that three and a half foot drop on Dane's run. You and I cleared that. And from that point on, we started comparing everything to that drop. I, I would say, oh, well, that was three and a half feet. Can I do this one? This is four feet. Yeah. And it just, that lit a fire under me that I, I, can't, I, I can't put it out. 
so what I'm saying is that ceiling moved for me. You know, at one point I was like, no, I'm comfortable where I'm at, you know, and you might feel like this as a mountain biker, you might feel like, I don't need to do those slabs or I don't need to do those gap jumps. You're, you're at a place where you're getting everything that you want out of your mountain biking. And that's great. There's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that at all, but that ceiling can also change and it can move. Well, here, here's what I want to say. I'm, yeah. I'm going to just kind of like blow the lid off of this thing. I'm going to say there actually is no, no ceiling. I'm, I'm going to say anything is possible. We yeah. are unlimited. Anything is possible. And that's amazing. And, yeah. and you and I are living proof of that because yeah, we were just regular cross country riders and, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If you're riding cross country and you're enjoying it that, and that's where you are. And I mean, and you're racing and I mean, and that has its own set of challenges and that sort of thing. But we got the progression bug for sure. We, we finally hit a drop and it felt good. And it was like, what else can we do? Because, and you, I, so are we chasing that feeling? That's, that's kind of the second thing I wanted to talk to was this floating ceiling that can move. And the second thing is, and I hate using this word because I, I, I don't want to seem like insensitive, but it's a little bit like an addiction in the sense that we're chasing that next hit, that next thrill. You know, it's like, oh, man, like I, in my head, you know, we did that anthem drop. And the minute that I finished that anthem drop at, at Mountain Creek, which is I think it's we measured it. It was about 10 feet high and 14 feet out. So it's it's a considerable a, drop, at least for me. It's a visually very, very scary drop because yes. I believe the one you're talking about off of Tempest, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it, it comes in a little bit rocky and then yep. you ride. I don't want to say it's a skinny, but you ride a wooden platform out <laughs> for, like for a while. 20 eight feet. feet, 10 feet. I mean, <laughs> it, it, it feels like it's a long time. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You're, but, you know, like you have to be like centered yeah, on yeah. that thing pretty perfectly. Yeah. You have time yeah. for another, a couple of pedal strokes. And then, yes. yeah, it, it's 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 big. I mean, it looks awesome, but it, it also does. looks very intimidating the, the first yes. time you do it. Yeah. I tell you Super what, though, the minute that we hit that, right, you know, I, of course, I wanted to hit it over and over after I hit it. But the next when we finished that ride, my next thought was covenant because I know that you had yep. done it. But like, that's what I mean. Like I'm this addiction to chase the thrill was like, I couldn't be happy with, Oh, well you did Tempest. Now you're good. I was like, no, I did Tempest. <laughs> What's the next thing I can do? You know? Oh, and it's like, if that felt good. Imagine how good the a bigger one's going to feel. Yeah. 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 So and that's you know scary. What? It does feel, it does feel, it does feel good. I did the bigger <laughs> one. It's amazing. It's amazing. It I got, the, yes. I got the speed dialed in for that one that day. And I did that drop. Uh, oh, you were unbelievable. Half a dozen times. And yeah, yeah and it, it's awesome. I mean, you're flying through the air. That's why yeah. jumping is so addictive, too. You know, we're, we're, yeah. we're not good at it enough to like really be addicted to, to be chasing jumping all the time. But, you know, our listeners that, that love jumping, you know who you are. And they're, they're chasing that airtime all the time. They're chasing that feeling. I mean, you're flying through the air on a bicycle. It's just, it's just kind of magical. And yeah, no ceiling where we get anything yeah. is possible. If, 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 if you and I are doing these things, anything is possible. We're unlimited listener. You're unlimited. Anything is possible. Uh, dream it up, visualize it and start working towards it. See yeah. what happens. What's yeah. the best that can happen. Let's, let's do this, Danny. Let's, let's, let's take this and let's cap it off right here. And I, I do want to pick this up either next week or at some other point, because there's so much to this, you know, we, we just literally scratched the surface of this, you know, about being unlimited, about removing that ceiling or, you know, having a movable ceiling that, you know, you think you're at right now, but actually if you want, it could be more, you know, and, and what it means to chase something, you know, chase that feeling. And is that right? Is that a good thing to have as a motivation, you know, like all of these things are going to require a lot more time and thought from us. All and right. I have I like it. a ton of notes written down, which, oh. you know, I never do. So um, let's do this. Let's let's move into our gratitude. The stoke pad. The stoke, <laughs> the stoke pad. Yes. Oh, man. I love it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. But yeah, we right, should, I like we it. Should, and, you know. Let's get as much listener feedback as we can, because you are literally going to be part of this next episode. Like, give us your feedback uh, on what we talked about, your reasonings, what you agree with, what you disagree with, um, why, why you are chasing progression. If you're chasing progression and, you know, 
Yeah. And, 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 you know, what, what are your reasons behind that uh, of the things that we talked about? So uh, on the YouTube comments or ride and laugh one at Gmail. And if you have a quote about overcoming obstacles that you think can get the stoke meter up, then put it into the YouTube comments. Let's, uh, let's get, let's get some really cool quotes going. It could, uh, Hey, it could be an original. I'm, I'm, but if you, if you have a famous quote or an original quote, something that's, that's inspiring, um, we'll put it onto the Stoke pad and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll see where it I goes mean, on the Stoke meter. It, it, whatever you come up with can't be worse than Michael Jordan's. <laughs> that was terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> MJ. Uh, I, I, I yeah. thought you would like that one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Scotty Pippen's like, yeah, that's what I said, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Ball hog. <laughs> Wow. Jordan's like, I didn't yeah. say that. That was Paxton. I didn't even say that. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> old old 90s Bulls references. Uh, yeah, we just all, lost all the people all that the get new... our, our cheers. <laughs> all, all the people that get our cheers references on uh, Sam Malone and Carla are also <laughs> laughing at the Bulls references. Everyone else is like, yeah, maybe my mom uh, will listen on cassette. You know, she's going to get right, your, yeah. your references. <laughs> 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 Let me tell you something Jerry West said back in my day. All right. All right. Well, let's get into our mountain bike gratitudes. Of the, unless you had anything else, shall we move on to our mountain bike gratitudes of the week? No, I, let's do that because I loved how you ended that. Let's, let's get the listeners to come back in. Then we'll have something more to talk about. So, yeah, let's get into the oh, that part. Go ahead, not Danny. The, not the 90s Bulls part? No, no. Okay. Not I that. agree. Yeah. <laughs> Edit the 90s Bulls stuff out. We'll talk about the uh, some... What do we talk about basketball for? Anyway? Oh, Michael Jordan. He's in the quote. There we right. go. There you go. <laughs> like, how does this happen? Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. What's your, what is your mountain bike gratitude of the week? My friend Sage. Man, my mountain bike gratitude, and this is going to sound really silly, but I am really grateful for my health. And I, I got to tell you, I've been going through some crap lately, personally, you know, with the divorce and all that stuff. And you know, I, I ate a lot of really poor foods and made a lot of poor choices. Mm. You were and stress eating. Your power to weight eating. ratio was went that the wrong way. Was, <laughs> <laughs> was, there was no power. Can we have weight. a before and after? <laughs> Can we have a before and after power to weight ratio? And Very then scared. as you lose the weight, we'll update it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I'm 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 really grateful that I I have good health and and I was in good enough health that even though I was making these really poor decisions, I had a good base, and I'm starting to get back into that base again, you know, and and you know, getting that top ten, it made it meant something to me. It meant something to me because yeah. it was a sign to me that I'm getting back to form, and yeah. you know, I have to admit there was there was times you know in the last year where. I, I didn't have a very good positive image of myself. I was pretty down on myself and, you know, I, I, I didn't feel good. I didn't felt, feel like I look good and, and that's starting to come back. And so I'm really grateful for that. And I don't know what else to say about it, except that, that, that's no, it. I, that, that's a fantastic one when you could, you should, we should literally be giving thanks for our health or wherever we are on our health journey for, you know, we're alive for uh, on this beautiful planet experiencing every day is a gift and um went, went to just stop and say you know what my body's healthy i feel strong i'm fit that that is something to always have gratitude for i write that in my journal almost every day that i'm strong fit healthy and, and lean and feeling good and and same thing for my family and, and health challenges that that we've been going through that and um so gratitude to just having a healthy body and just feeling good. And and we both talked about having like what could have been serious falls this yeah. week and walking away. And that is not something to take lightly. That is something I look That's at right. that and I'm say gratitude that I walked away because, you know, on some of our crashes, like didn't seem like that big a deal. And, and as you mentioned earlier, like our, our worst injuries aren't always our worst crashes. And, you know, sometimes, you eat the bear and sometimes the bear eats you. And, and we, we both walked away from something. So yes, that's really cool and absolutely worth having gratitude for. And I also want to point out that you talked about, you know, just being lower and having, and, and you mentioned you, you, I could feel the gratitude that you had and the sense of accomplishment that you have for just feeling better, 
just getting, just you reaching for something to appreciate. You know, that's what this gratitude is, is about. Gratitude of the week, gratitude of the day, mountain biking, anything is just finding something to appreciate. Uh, you know what? I feel good today. You know, I, 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 I fell off the wagon a little bit with my diet. I ate some garbage and I still feel really strong and I'm still healthy. And that's something that I, I feel good about today. And that just brings you up emotionally a little bit. You know, that's what the gratitude's about. That's what the gratitude journal's about. It's just, look, you know, it, 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 you're not going to feel bad about yourself when you're also feeling gratitude. We can't hold two thoughts in our head at, at one time. You always said so that. So put yep. in a thought that you like. Put a thought in that you like. You know, reach for a better thought. It's okay. You deserve it. Thank you, Danny. Anything is possible, my friend, and you are unlimited. Uh, thank you, my friend. My Mountain Bike Gratitude of the Week also touches on health, and it's a little bit different because I'm going to say it is metabolic flexibility. And what I mean by that is if you go back and you listen to the nutrition primer that we did, and let us know if you want to hear more on the nutrition, um, but I think it was episode number five or six, we did a whole thing on nutrition. And um, a big part of that was that Sage and I are fat adapted, and uh, Sage yeah. talks quite a bit about fasting and he does more fasting than I do, but it's a tool that I have in my belt if I was a Batman fasting person. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I can skip a meal. I can skip two meals. It's, it's, really, it's really no big deal. And so I flew back from Arizona, and I had an early flight, and I don't eat during travel. I just don't eat. It's a great time to fast. You're not moving, so there's no reason yeah. to be calorying up eating calories. I mean, so many restaurants and, and junk food and everything in the airport and then on the plane. And then I get home and it was 4.30 or so, so I had dinner. So I did one meal. And then my next couple of days at work, just so busy that just no time to eat. And I just kind of like get to that lunchtime kind of time. And I'm just like, no, I'm just going to work. Yeah. I'll just eat when yeah. I get home. And then, and it's no big deal. I'm not hangry. I feel great. It's no, It's just, it's just, no big deal. And so there's this metabolic flexibility that I can go without food because we're fat adapted. And it's just, it works out really nicely when I'm traveling or when I don't have time to eat. I also went all my rides in the desert, completely fasted, just drinking water. No, no problem. Three, four hours on the bike in the sun. I don't need any food. I don't need any gels, you know, and it's just, it's just very cool. And I don't need to eat as soon as I get back in the car. I, dro I drove home, take a shower, and then I made myself a meal. So it's a, it's a really cool thing to have. Go if, if you're interested, go back and listen to the Nutrition Primer, and you can put something in the comments of that episode or this episode if you have any questions or you want us to do more on nutrition. We're happy to get into it. So, Yeah. You know, I'll pull my inner Dan, and I will say the human body is amazing. You're amazing. Ah, I love it. Yes. And we yes. can do so much more than we can give ourselves credit for, and – being metabolically uh, flexible and fasting is one of those things. So awesome, Dan. I, I, I also use that tool a lot. Um, I have to get back into some fasting. That's one thing that I've, I've kind of gotten lazy on. And uh, yeah, so that, that is a tool that I will be whipping out as well. It is probably the worst superhero power to have, you know. Yeah. <laughs> What's your power? <laughs> uh, I can skip meals, whatever I want. <laughs> yeah. Well, what would the name of that superhero be? Oh, Madman. Metabo, Metabo, Metabo man. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Look, is, is Superman on or something? Is Do we have to watch Metabo again? It's so boring. <laughs> he just sits there. <laughs> <laughs> the adventures of <laughs> not eating. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Metabo. <laughs> Oh, God. Kids, today we'll be doing an 84-hour fast <laughs> and begin. Sit tight. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned next week for a water fast. Ooh, ooh, no water. Oh, I want to see this. I don't want to miss that. Tabo, man. Oh, my gosh. All right. All right. Listen. What's your mountain bike tip of the week? Mountain bike tip. This is a great one. And uh, if you have ever heard the the – the whole don't shift under load. And when you hear that, that's in reference to, yeah, that sounds terrible. I should not think about it. No. <laughs> it took me a second. I, it took me a second right to like, realize what you were talking about. <laughs> well, what is, I don't shift at all when I'm it, taking a load. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> First of all, nobody drives manual anymore. Secondly, nobody's crapping while they drive manual transmission. I, what? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Uh, no, it took me a second. You said it and I was like, "What?" Oh. Yeah. The derailleur. The bike. Shifting gears. The gear yes. shifting. The, the shifting. Shifting gears. gears. Okay. Under yeah, load. Yeah, you got to put some context in. You got to put it some context. It was terrible. In. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's some guy in the toilet like, uh, don't move. Say so said, don't move when you're taking a load. <laughs> if you shift, what, shift my weight? I don't understand. What, what's going to happen? <laughs> Metabolo's going to char- charge Metabolo's it. charge it. <laughs> I haven't Just had a load live. in three days. I haven't eaten. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh this has gotten way off the rails oh. way off the rails okay oh my god okay. okay so shifting your gears under load usually means when you're pedaling hard so what what typically happens is you putting get effort to an into unexpected the yes when you get to an unexpected climb so you're you're in a very hard gear so you just got done a downhill so you're in a very small gear, (laughs) but that's not a climbing gear. And so you get to this unexpected climb and suddenly you have to drop all these gears to get yourself higher up into that cassette. And that's really bad for your derailleur. So that they tell you not to shift under load. That's what that means. But there's actually a way that you can do that. It's going to take practice and I don't recommend doing this, but if you're in a pinch, and you got to drop. That's funny. Pinching a load. If if you're in a pinch, <laughs> I mean, the, I haven't Sorry. said anything. You're you're doing all of this to yourself. I'm roasting myself. Oh yeah, my you're God. completely doing this to yourself. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. All right. So Eric, yep. just just yep. so you know, he's done this completely <laughs> to himself. <laughs> he's pinching loads and <laughs> shifting. <laughs> Oh my God. I'm just along for the ride here. This is great. Let me know when you need me to make a joke, Sage. (laughs) (laughs) All right. So if, if you are in a pinch and you have to drop gears, the way that you can safely do that, or at least saferly, saferly do that, um, you have a power band in your stroke. And so when you come across the top, usually when you get across the top and then you go down about, I'm going to say about a third or a fourth down your power band, there's going to be a spot where you can kind of let up. And as you let up, that's when you want to shift that gear. And I'm going to suggest doing that one at a time. Wait for your pedal to cross on your dominant foot. We talked about this earlier about dominant, not stroke. dominant foot. In your pedal right. stroke, there's a, there's a, a, a spot where there's a little bit of give. You're a little bit of less power. That's right. That's right. So as you come across the top, that's your power band, right? So on your dominant foot, as your foot come across the top, let up a little bit, just a little bit, just enough. That's when you shift. Do not pull up on the other foot. Like wait till the next power band comes through. But if you're able to shift during those times when you're not putting the power down, you'll be able to shift under load and get away with it. Yeah. It's a subtle move. Uh, It It does feel and and usually if you're like desperately trying to get into an easier gear when you're climbing a hill you're like you're desperate so you're like uh screw the cassette i don't care if it breaks you're just trying to make it easier and keep your momentum a little bit but sage is absolutely right you can you can do some real damage and it's not really fun when you hear all those noises and and it's not shifting well crunching um, yeah the traditional derailleur which is the piece of equipment that shifts the, the the gear in the back or in the front, but in mountain biking, you, you typically only have a rear derailleur. Uh, it does it does not like shifting when there's when it's under tension. Now, the new SRAM transmission, which Ooh. neither of us have, but it is on the new bikes, yeah. apparently prefers to shift under load. So it's the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> the context was there. You can't laugh at me about that. The context was already established. <laughs> Metabo, Metabo, back me up here. Where is Metabo? <laughs> <laughs> Fasting bastard. <laughs> we all got a little Metabo in us. Okay. Ooh. Not a little Metabo. I mean, we all have oh. a little bit of the. 
<laughs> um, uh, all right, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let that go. I'm just gonna move on from from this whole this whole bet. But uh, I did a terrible job. Tip. Thank you. <laughs> it's a, it's a hard one to explain because it's a, it's a, it's a really a, it's a feel move. You know, you'll you'll know when you're in that yeah. power band when you're putting down the power. You'll also know when you can let up a little bit. That's the time when you want to shift one at a time. Yeah, be patient with it, and and it, it will work. All right. Uh, okay. Give it a give it a shot, uh, listeners. If you have any questions about that, let us know on the podcast. Ride and laugh on a Gmail. Yeah. Uh, definitely <laughs> want to hear from everybody this week because we're going to con- carry on this conversation. So let us know what you think. Um, certainly if you just want to let us know that you enjoyed the pod or if any of our, um, any of our humor here, um, was actually funny. I'm not sure. Sage and I certainly enjoyed it, but it was uh, very silly this week, but that's what we're doing. We're having fun. We're talking bikes. We're being silly and we're getting everyone to st- stoke up and, uh, and we're unlimited. So what's the best that could happen? That's right. All right. Well, if you're still listening, I got news for you. You're definitely one of us. You're a mountain biker. You love mountain biking. You love talking bikes. You love riding bikes. Go ahead and set us to auto download on your favorite podcast player. Give us a five star review. Give us a thumbs up on the podcast. Subscribe. Uh, Make sure you hit the notification bell on your YouTube for the ride and laugh. Uh, That is definitely worthwhile. So we appreciate you. We have gratitude for you. We love bikes. You love bikes. Ride and laugh. I'll see you, everyone. <laughs>